You want to get better at JavaScript? We're going to make three projects in one hour using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You don't want to miss this. Check it out. So the first project that we're actually even going to make is a counter and the counter, it has an increase button here. So you click it and it makes the counter go up. You decrease, it makes the counter go down and you reset it to zero. Now for these three projects, we're not going to focus a ton on design. You can go ahead and make this as stylish as you want to make it. But I think for the purposes that we're doing, we're going to keep it all pretty minimal and focus more on getting this to do stuff and how these things are working together. So let's go ahead and get into this. The first thing that we're going to need to do is press control and command and we're going to save it and we're going to name it index.html. Now the thing I am in, I'm in a counter folder that I made. There's nothing in here. We're going to make all the files now. Now I'm using VS code. You can use whatever you want, but one of the cool things with VS code is I can make an exclamation point and enter and it go ahead. It goes ahead and fills out all this boilerplate text for me. So for the document here where it says tie dot, I'm just going to name this counter, keeping it simple. And after we write counter to kind of let you know what the title is at the top of every web page, you have that tab, right? And the tab tells you what page you're on. Well, the title is that information there. So we're just naming our page counter. So we're going to go here and we're going to make a div. Now, if you're new to HTML, you're probably asking what's a div. A div is basically saying I'm going to put something in this section of the page and this is what we're going to contain inside of the div container. So we're going to go ahead and do div dot container and we press tab and it gives us class equals container. And if you've ever done CSS before, you know, the way you reference a class is using a, a period or a decimal point. And the way you reference an ID would be a hash symbol. Show you if we used div hash container instead, and we press tab, it gives us an ID of container. So that's a cool little Emmet shortcut that I try to show people all the time. And it will definitely make a lot of the development that you do a lot faster. So we're going to go inside of here and we're going to make a H1 element and H1 means heading. And our heading here is going to be counter all caps. And that's basically the top text where we say counter and under our counter. If you remember, we had our number that we have. So we're going to go ahead and create a span element. And we're going to actually go back in here and make that the ID value. So that way we can call that later. And then we're going to go here and press zero. So we remember our, we had that numeric value of zero, so we can go up, down. We want to be able to control that. And we're going to get to that a little bit later. We're going to create a uh, new div and inside that div, we're going to call a class and it's going to be the button container. And inside that div, we're going to want to have three buttons. We want to have our decrease button, our reset button and our increase button. So we can do button. And then in here we can do class equals BTN. Oops, I put a space in the front BTN. And then we can do decrease. And so here we can say decrease. And then we can go ahead and copy this almost. two, three, and then here we can go ahead and change decrease to reset and PTN reset. And then we can come here and change decrease to increase, increase. And that's it. We are currently done with this page. We want to go up here and we're going to come back in a second. So press control N or command N, depending on what you're on, save this. And we're going to name this uh, style.css. And that is going to be our CSS page. And before we can style anything on there, we're going to want to come back here and above the title, you can do it anywhere. I'm just used to this. We can do a link. CSS and ba that basically gives us link rel sheet and style.css. And so we can save that. And what we're going to do now is go to your extensions and we're going to type in live server. And I typed in liver server, whoops, live server. And we're going to go to this one right here with the purple icons. We're going to install it. I already have it installed. And basically what that lets us do is we right click on our HTML page and we can click open with live server. And so it's going to go ahead and open that page here and we can now see what we've done so far. And now we have our H1, our counter, our span of zero, our decrease, reset and increase. Obviously these buttons, you can click them, but they don't do anything yet. We haven't set them and that's what we need to do now. 
And so we're not going to do anything too crazy tonight. You can style this however you want, but we're just going to come in with a pretty basic style to get us going. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create our body tag and we need to make a background color. And the color that we're going to be using, I have it saved right here. It's a, a, basically a light blue color. You can use whatever you want, but I'm just going to keep this pretty simple and you can copy that. So we're going to go ahead and use a display of flex because I want to use Flexbox for everything. And then we're going to go ahead and do a justify content center and we'll save that and we'll go back to our main page here that we have and bam, we have the light blue and we have everything now in the center, but the wording is not centered. The numbers aren't centered. So we need to fix that as well. We're going to go here and the first thing we're going to work on is that header. So obviously we need to do a display flex for the flex box. Then we're going to go ahead and do a justify content center and we'll save that and we check back and now the words are centered. And then so from here, we're going to go ahead and do a font weight because I want to add, uh, like make the words a little bit lighter. So we're going to do a font weight of 300 and then we're going to do a font family of sans serif. And let's save that and we come back and now we've got a word center. We got the font weight being a little bit lighter and it kind of looks nice and neat. Now we got to work on this number here. Our to call an ID, we use the hashtag symbol and then we'll enter value. And so now we're calling that. And so we're doing the same thing, font family, sans serif. We're going to do a font weight. So let's go ahead and go with 900. And then we want to increase the font size because we want that number to be big. And let's go ahead with just 100 pixels. And then we want to go ahead and center that. So we'll do display flex and then we'll do a justify content center and we'll save that and we'll come back here and now we have a heavy number big and you can see that prominently so now we just kind of want to work in these buttons here so one cool thing is what we did here if you recall each class has btn in the front so we can call all of them at the same time so we can do this two ways we can do a button or we can do dot button Either way, so that way if we create more buttons, we could do the exact same thing, no matter how many attributes. And we're just gonna go ahead and do a background color of white. So we can do uh, hashtag FFF. Border radius, because we want the buttons to be kind of slightly rounded, of eight pixels. Padding. Now, padding, we can do this several ways. So I wanna add five pixels and 10 pixels. So. What I'm basically saying here is by using two values, the first one is I want to do the top and the bottom, and the second one I want to do the sides. And it's going to go to them respectively. Now we could do four values and do them one at a time, but this is just a really cool way to minimize that. So we're going to go ahead and save that, and we come back, and now our buttons look nice. They have the rounded corners, they're white, and they look good. So now we just need to work on the functionality of these things. So we're going to go ahead and press Control N, or Command N, depending what platform you're using, and save it, and we're gonna name this app.js. And before we forget, because this happens all the time, don't wanna forget this, you have to link your JavaScript page to your index.html, otherwise, they're not gonna be able to communicate with each other. So, we're gonna come at the end of the body tag, and we're gonna do a script source, and we're just gonna link it to our app.js file. And now they can communicate back and forth. We want to declare our variable of count and it's equal to zero. And so now we need to get our values. So we're going to do const value and we want to go ahead and we want to get that value uh, that we had of the span element hashtag value, which is ID value. So we want to create this const of value and we're saying we need to grab this uh, attribute. So we're going to use document dot query selector. And we want hashtag value. And so now we want to go ahead and do uh, increase. And we want to get the value document.querySelector. And we want to get uh, dot increase. And we can go ahead and copy this and print it two more times. And here we want decrease. And here we want. Uh, reset 
and these are the the four values we have value increase reset and decrease and this is what we basically want to control our buttons and to control the value the number on the screen so the first button that we're going to work on obviously is the increase button so we're going to do increase the variable that we named above and we're going to go ahead um, add an event listener so basically by adding an event listener we're saying okay we're looking for something we're listening for something to happen here and it's either a click or a, a, you know whatever it may be an event and so we need to define what that is and what's going to happen so we're going to go ahead and do a click event because that's what we're adding and when this happens we want to call a function of e and e represents event and we put our curly brackets inside the parentheses so pay attention to that and so we're going to go ahead and create a new const called actions and actions is basically saying e the event the current target whatever that event happened on we want to return the class list which is basically saying we want to return this in uh, text that we can uh, manipulate and we're going to go ahead and do an if statement here so if actions contains the word increase we want to go ahead and we want to increment that count count plus plus we're saying make that count increase by one and what we want to do now is we want to do at value dot text content is equal to count so we're basically saying we want to take the value uh, that we have above and we want to give it count but in text form so that way it can be uh, reused and we can go ahead and we can copy this entire thing again because we want to do the same thing for decrease and if the word contains decrease, we want to decrement the count or lower the count. And whoops, let's go ahead and erase this part up here before we have an error. And we want to go ahead and send that one more time for uh, reset. So if it has reset, right, what do we want to do? Well, we want to go ahead and make the count equal to zero. And so we're basically saying there, by using one equal sign, we're re, re, uh, declaring that value, we're giving that value again. And so now, if we save this and we go back to our counter here, and we increase, we're working. If we decrease, it's going down. And if we reset it, well, it's already a zero. So if we reset it, oh, we have an error here. And that error, oh. I see. Forgot to change this. Reset, and we'll save that. And we can increase and reset, and now it's back to zero. We just finished our counter. That was perfect. You can obviously style this up however you want, but for uh, what we're doing right now, this is working perfectly. So every time we press this, we're calling this increase .add event listener, and we're listening for that click. And once that click happens, we're declaring this function of an event and that event is the current targets returning that and we're going through this if statement and we're increasing that count because we have the word increase in there basically what's happening here is it's going through this class and it's taking both of these words but we're searching for decrease reset increase and so there's your counter perfect on to the next project and essentially what we're doing here is we're going to basically create a color generator where we press a button and it's going to give us a random color and a value and it's going to control it from there the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to save this and we're going to name it index.html and so from index.html we're going to go ahead and start on this thing and the only thing we really need first we have to press exclamation point enter it gives us that and we can go to title here and we can call this our random color generator Make that capital. And so now that we named the title of random color generator, we're going to go ahead and come here and we're going to make two span items. And the first one is going to be the ID of value. And the value of this is going to be uh, RGB. We'll leave it lowercase. RGB 255, 255, 255. And that's essentially saying uh, RGB value of white is 255 so the page will automatically start every single time with the color of white and we're gonna do a button and we're gonna name this generate random color uh, give this an ID whoops of generate and so that's it that's all we need in HTML so we're gonna go ahead and open our new page 
and we're going to save it with uh, style.css. And then make sure you come back here and you do uh, link CSS style sheet and we save that. So now they can communicate back and forth. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with is going to be our root. And this is basically creating a variable called current value. And as we just said, we're starting our page on 255, 255, 255, which is white. And from here, we can go to our body. And we're going to go ahead and do a display of flex. I want to use Flexbox. And we can go ahead here and we're going to do our justify content center. We're going to do our align items center. And we're going to do our flex direction. And we're going to do column. I want columns, right? So if I go ahead and save that, and then I come back here and open with live server. We can now see these values would normally be here in the straight line. Now they're on a column looking. So if I go ahead and come back to our style.css and remove this and save. So when I delete that and I bring this back, you see it's in a straight line, which we don't want. We want it to be in a column. We want the button underneath. So I'll go ahead and save that and bring that back. And now we have them in a straight line going down. We'll go ahead and set the min height at 100 VH view height, which basically makes it responsive saying, I want to take up 100% of the screen with whatever we're doing. And our background is going to be a var, which we set in our root value, and it's going to be current value. And so what we're going to want to manipulate is this value. And we want to add some definition to our span. And so we're going to do a font weight of, we'll do about 400 and see how that looks a little bit darker. Cool. And then we're going to go ahead and add a font size because we want these to be big, right? And we're going to set this to two rent and we're going to change up the color and we're going to do one, two, one, two, one, two. And so now we want to just style up the button ever so slightly a 0.8 rem for the font weight for the font size. Do the font weight. I want this to be dark. So we're going to go ahead and set that to 600, save that and see how that looks. And now you can see our word is dark, prominent and showing do the font family, a sans serif, a color. And we're going to do RGBA here, 255, 255, 255.8. And that's basically controlling the transparency of it. So we can go back now and we have white and it's a little bit see through slightly. And then now we can go ahead and create the button to be a little bit bigger. So let's add some padding and we're going to add one rem there. Order radius of uh, 0.2 rems. Let's bring that back. And so now we have a much bigger button. I want it to be longer though. I don't want it just right on top of the button. So let's go ahead and do a margin top. Bring that down just a smidge to let's say three rims. See how that looks. And now it's dropped down quite a bit. That's nice. We can set the background as uh, the same. Hashtag one, two, one, two, one, two. User select none. So it's not already selected transition of transform and we can make that transformation happen 0.2 seconds. So we'll go ahead and click that Now we got this button and it looks good. And now we want to go ahead and create like a little hover event. So the cuts like the user knows that it's being hovered over. So we could do button hover and we're basically going to say cursor pointer. So I want the cursor when it's over the button to turn into a pointer. So I want the transform and I want it to translate to Y and we're going to do minus dot four rem. Let's see how that looks. So we'll come here and basically I'm making it rise up just a bit. So when we go over it, the cursor turns into the finger pointer and it makes that button rise up. Now we just need to make it do stuff. So now, we can go ahead and create a new file, save it, app.js, and go back here, and we can do a script source of app.js, and save that, and now we our JavaScript file is communicating with our HTML file. So the first thing we want to do is 
we want to create a random number. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a function for random numbers. And that function is going to create a random number for each value and we can replace that. So let's go ahead and start with that first. So we're going to do a const of random number. And inside this, we're going to do a min max. We're going to use uh, ES6 arrow functions. Our min is going to equal math.ceiling. We're going to go ahead and put the min in there. Then we're going to do the max is equal to math.floor. Oops. We'll put the max in there. So here right now is we're going to return a math.floor. And so in here we're going to do math.random. Put that to call that math.random. And we're going to multiply that by this. We're going to do max minus min plus one. And then outside of add the minimum. So basically what we're saying is we want to return the math.floor, the random, whatever the random integer that comes up. And then we're going to go ahead and do the max minus the min. And then we're going to add the min value there as well. And so from here, we're going to do our const of random RGB, all one word. Oops. Make our uh, array. And so we're going to write random number. Inside random number, we have 0, 255. We're going to have another random number. And it's going to be between 0 and 255. And we're going to have our third random number. And it's going to be between 0 and 255. So that gives us the first RGB value, second and third. And so we can go ahead and close that array. What we want to do is we want to do our const of current value span. And then from here, we're going to do our document get element by ID that of value. And so our span of the uh, idea of value, we're going to be able to change that value number here. And so what we're going to do now is basically put in our math random numbers that we've just created using math.random ceiling and floor. And it's created this array of random integers. And so we're going to use that to create our colors. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do our document dot get element by ID. And this time we're going to go for generate. Oh, it has to be in quotations. And so we're going to go ahead and add. And so we're going to add an event listener to that. And that event is going to be a click. And if you remember, generate is the button. So we want to click event on the button. And we're going to say uh, function E const RGB is equal to random RGB. And then we're going to do const content is equal to, and we're going to use backticks here because we're going to add some literals. We're going to do RGB, and then we'll go ahead and add the first one, which is RGB currently at zero. So we're adding, so this is basically saying we want the literal value for that first one. Then we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing again because we want the second one. And then we're going to do the exact same thing again for the third one. Yeah. And we're going to go here and name that zero, one, and two. So it's taking the first place, second place, third place. And then we're going to go ahead and do document dot, oh, document dot document element. document element dot style dot style property uh, style dot set property sorry and basically what we're saying is we want to set but we want to get this document want to do set the style of it which is style CSS and we want to set that property and we're going to set the property of the variable that we created dash dash current value oh I almost made a mistake there oh it's dash value ain't it yep think so yep that value and we're going to set it to content which is this right here it's this variable that we just created there now we want to go ahead and do current value span 
this right here, that text content, because we want it to be in text form, and that's equal to content. So now, if we go ahead and save all that and come back back here and we press this, it's changing. But we have one error. What's the error? Unexpected. Oh, that was a mistake. And so we come back here and now you can see the color in the background is changing to that current value target and these numbers are changing as well. Each time it's rotating, rotating, rotating. You can press it a million times. You just made your random color generator and and your counter. Now it's time for project number three. All right, so this is the third project. And the goal with all of this was to progressively get harder and harder. So we went from the easiest being the counter to slightly more complicated with the RGB. And now we're at the tip calculator. Now this is going to be a little bit of JavaScript heavy. We're going to go through a lot of stuff. We're going to use some functions. We're definitely going to do a lot of CSS on this. And we're going to use some funky things like some CSS variables and things like that. But I really think this is going to highlight a lot of stuff that we can do in JavaScript and kind of pull everything together. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do, we have our folder here. So we're going to just press command N, control N. We're going to save it index.html. Exclamation point enter. We've got our dummy text there. Exclamation enter. And we've got our boilerplate there for us. And the first thing we're going to do is go to title. We're going to replace this with tip calculator. So now we're going to go ahead and do a div and we're going to do this in a class of container. And we're going to go ahead and do our H1 here. And the fir first thing that we're going to title this as is, you guessed it, tip calculator. All right. Now, notice how everything that we're going to be doing is going to be inside of this div of, div of container, okay? So we want to kind of encompass everything in there, and then we're going to style the background behind it. But we want everything tight within that container. So make sure you're doing everything within that closing bracket. All right. And so now what we're going to do here is we're going to use a form. And so form is going to give us the ability to take some inputs and we're going to do some drop down menus and things like that. So we're going to start out with a form here We can go ahead with a P element and we can go ahead and say, what is the first question that we're going to ask is what is your bill total? So that's going to be our question that's above our input menu. And we're going to go ahead and wrap this in a div right here. And we're going to call this div bill amount form or input input sounds better and so we're going to do input here and in here we're going to go ahead and do input class is going to be bill amount make sure you're using camel case here our type is going to be text and our placeholder text that we can write it will just be bill amount so now we have our first question and we have our input field. Now we need to do our second question. And the second question is going to have a drop down menu. And so our second question is, and we'll use a P element for this. How was your service? How was the service? Was it great? Was it outstanding? Let's and here we will do another div and it's going to be a class of service. Oops, I misspelled that. And here's where we're going to list out all of our choices. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do this as a select because we want this to be a drop down select and name will be service selector. And our ID will be the same service selector. And so from here, we're going to do our option and the value will be zero. And before that, we're going to put here disabled selected. So that means they can't choose that option. And we're going to write here in that option, choose an option. And so we're going to come here with our option and the value for this is going to be 0 0.3. And what that basically means is 30%. So we're going to write 30% here and we'll write outstanding service. And what we can do now is we can just go ahead and copy and paste this one, two, three, four. So we'll have five criterias and we'll do a 20% on this one. And we'll say it was good. We'll come to this one. We'll do 
We'll do 15% and we'll say it was okay. And we'll do 10% bad. Then we'll do horrible and we'll leave 5%. So we'll go here five, we'll go here 10 and we'll go here 15. So now we have 0.3 because that represents 30%, 0 0.2 represents 20, so on and so forth. And these are our five options. And so we make sure we have our close, close, div, close, close, and our form, close, close. So now our form is closed at this point. So now we have to ask our third question. How many people are sharing this bill? So let's go ahead and do that. How many people are sharing this bill? Here, we'll go ahead and wrap this in a div and we'll call it people amount input. And in here, we're gonna go ahead and do our input class like we did above. So we're gonna do input, the type will be text. The class will be, whoops, people amount. And the placeholder text will be number of people. So now, they will ask how many people were with us. So now we need a button that when it's pressed, it will calculate all these totals for us. And we also need to create some space where we're gonna use our JavaScript to input the information to tell them how much money to tip. And so obviously we're gonna use JavaScript to do that, but we need to create that space as well. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and create a button and we're gonna add an ID on this button. And that ID is gonna be Calculate. Oops. And I've used that. Calculate. And here we'll write calculate. So here we can write calculator ends now space for totals. So that way we separate that so we know like what this extra space is doing here. I like to kind of comment a little bit here and there and I feel like this is a, a very justified comment. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do a div and we're gonna do an ID of total tip. And inside of total tip have a sup and what a sup is, it allows us to have certain icons like a dollar sign or, or like maybe like a trademark symbol and it'll be slightly raised with the text and it'll make it a little bit smaller but it, it's basically what you use for those characters. And we're gonna do a span and an ID on that span called tip. And for now, we're gonna use placeholder text that we're gonna manipulate, which is currently 000. Now, we're gonna to wanna to create a, another value, which will be, if it's more than one person, we want it to show each. So each person will be paying that. So we'll do a P element here with an ID of each. And here we can write each. We can save this and we can format the document so it all looks nice and neat together. And we can go ahead and open with live server like we've done the, on the two previous projects. And this is what it looks like right now. Obviously we haven't done any styling or anything like that, but we have our heading here. We have our first question, our amount, our second question, our drop down menu is now there. And how many people are sharing this bill? Our number of people, our calculate. And right now we need to hide this for now, but we want it to pop up after the calculations occur. So that's kind of our roadmap going forward. So the first thing that we need to do, go ahead and link our CSS. It's gonna be a style.css, create a new file, save it as a style.css. So now both files are communicating back and forth. So the first thing we're gonna do as always, do your root element. And we're gonna set up three colors. Now you can use whatever colors you want. These are the colors that I'm gonna use. I wanna do a linear gradient in the background and I kinda wanna use the same button, I mean the same color on a button. And I also wanna, you know, customize the form. The way we had it here, I'll show you. I'll bring this back over here. And I wanna do this linear gradient behind. I wanna add some color on this header. I wanna color on the button. But I also want that button to change colors when it's highlighted but I also want this form to be white and I want this text to be black. So that's kind of the design scheme that I'm going for. Nothing too crazy, but just enough that we can come up with some cool stuff. Now the gradient I'm using, I think I showed this uh, before, but if I didn't, 
Now, if I didn't show this before, this is one of my favorite tools to get a, uh, a gradient. You can go here, cssgradient.io. Uh, I, I love uh, this uh, website and I use it all the time because picking colors is kind of tough for me. But also, like if you go to the color shade section, they have all these shades where you can like, you know, let's say click green and they've got all these variations of green and all you gotta do is hit that and you can get that color. So someone like me, you know, design is not really my thing. Uh, I'm more of a, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a developer. I'm not really a designer. I can't even match my clothes much less anything else. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to use a linear gradient that I've already copied here to save us a little bit of time. And so what I'm going to do here is we're going to make three vi color variables. So the first one is going to be our main color. And that is this linear gradient here. The second one is going to be a second color. And that's going to be this color right here. And the third is going to be a third color. And it's just going to be white. So anytime we need to use white, we could just use third color and pop it in there, right? So it'll make things a lot easier and we don't have to keep repeating the same thing over and over. And so now we have our three colors that we're gonna be using uh, throughout the duration of this project. And so of course, in our root element, we're also gonna do margin zero, adding zero, box sizing, quarter box. So these are like the standards that I always do when I do a project. All right, all right, so now we're gonna to go to our body. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do, we're gonna do our display of flex, cause we're gonna use flex blocks like we've used in the other projects, right? We're gonna do our justify content center because I want that content to go to the center of the page. I want the font family to be sans serif. Now you can do whatever you want. I'm just using standard stuff. I want the background and I want it to be dash dash main color and it's gonna add that var for me there. And I wanna give a little space from the top. So I'm gonna do a margin top of just 5%. Now my goal with this is also to make this responsive and we're gonna use a media query in here so that way we can set it up for a smaller screen as well. And we'll save that and we go back to our project and now everything has shifted to the center of the page. We have our heading here, we have all this, and our background has become the linear gradient that we want. So we're making good progress. So right now we're gonna focus on the container. We're gonna do a height of 100%. So I want that container, if it needs to expand, cause we're gonna have you know information added to it, I want it to expand without any issues. The width, the width is gonna be 400 pixels. The background color, is going to be our third color, which is white. Oops. Our background is going to be our third color, which is white. And our border radius is going to be 20 pixels. And so we come back here and now we've got this going on for us. But like I said, but like I said, I wanna make this responsive. So let's go ahead and set up a media query. So we'll do media, max width, and we'll do 600 pixels. And basically what I'm saying is, if the width of the device, that whether it's a tablet or whatever it may be, if it's lower than 600 pixels, I want this to kick in. And so from here, we'll do our container. And I want the height, of course, to be 100%. And I want the width to be 95% of that screen space. I want the background to also be our third color. And I want the border radius to be 20 pixels. And we save that and we come back to our page right here. And what you can do is you can right click and go to inspect. And then when you inspect, this shows you like the HTML code, your console and all that good stuff. But we can go here and we have all these different device sizes. So this is 768 pixels, so it's still bigger than our media query. But now we have a large mobile screen, which is 425. And it's responsive, it's responsive, and it keeps going responsive. And it'll keep stretching. And then once it gets to this size, it just keeps it where it is. So now we've got this fully responsive. Create some space so that way all my media queries are at the end of this. 
And so now we're going to do our H1. We're going to do our background. And we're going to set this to second color. That's going to be the color for our heading. And we're going to do our color as third color, which is white. We're going to do a padding of 30 pixels and zero. So what that basically says is padding starts in a clockwise formation. So it would go top, right, left, bottom. So I can do four values and this would be top, right, le bottom, left, or I can use two values and this will represent top, bottom, and this will represent left or uh, right and left. So I can just do that easy way right there, 30 pixels and zero. I'm gonna go ahead and do a text transform and we're just gonna make everything uppercase. So that way it's also future proofed as well. So if we ever wanted to change this without considering whether that text is uppercase or not, now we have that set for us. We want our font size to be 2.2 rems. Oh, we want this to be bold. So I want this font weight to be like 900. I want it to be very dark and bold. And we want to add a border radius, but it needs to be the border radius for top left dash. And we'll go ahead and do 20 pixels. And we'll do the same thing. Copy this, paste it, but for top right. Because if we don't specify this, it's going to exceed the container of the header. And we want to go ahead and do our text align oops and we want to go ahead and do our text align center and so we'll save that and we have one issue here that i just noticed we have the space here so we need to set that margin to zero so let's go ahead and come here and do margin of zero and we save that and come back now and now it's completely closed together Sounds good right there that we're making progress. All right, so our heading is done. And so now we need to worry about our next few categories. So we can go ahead and focus on all the P elements and there are gonna be the same. So we want that, um, so we definitely want the text align to be center. So all that text can be centered. And now if we look back at our page, just that one thing alone, it's brought everything to the center area, which is perfect for us. Do our font size at 1.5 rem. And font weight is going to be 900. I want to bold. So we'll come back here and we have what is your build total? What is your service? How many people? And so this is not included in that. We need to do something for that. All right. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to style the whole div of total tip. So this whole section here. So we're going to come here and we'll do total tip. And we're going to do font size. And we'll do 2.2 rem. We'll make it big. Font weight is, of course, going to be bold. Everything on this page is bold. We'll go ahead and do our text align of center. Make sure it's all centered. And we come back. And everything is now where we want it to be. We want to kind of move that uh, dollar signs down a little bit. All right. And so now we're going to focus on the sup. So we're going to do total tip because it's in total tip. And we're going to do sup. And so from here, we're gonna go ahead and do font size. And we're gonna do like 1.5 rem. So we want it to be smaller than the actual dollar amount. And of course, the font weight is gonna be 900 as well, making it nice and bold. So I go ahead and save this, bring this back, and everything is in the center. Dollar sign is slightly up, everything looks good, perfect. So now we need to go ahead and we need to. So now that this is what we have, we need to, of course, center all these fields and style our button. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do bill amount input. And we're gonna do a display of flex. And we're gonna justify our content as center. And once we do that, we come back and the first field has gone. So we're gonna do the same thing for the next two fields. And we're gonna go here. And this is under the class of service, this div. So we want to make sure we move that. So let's do service, display, flex, justify content, center. And we save that and it's moved as well. And the last one that we're going to do is 
our people amount input. So we can go ahead and do people amount input. And the same thing again, display a flex, justify content center. We save that and that is moved over as well. So now we need to style that button and you're probably saying, okay, let's go ahead and do button display flex. It won't work and I'll show you why. So we're going to go ahead and do just for content center, but we come back and it's still in the same position. Well, a button will not allow anything to change this display outside of doing like display block. So we're going to go ahead and do a display block. And so what we can do with the margin is we can do a margin of 30 pixels and do auto. And that now has us perfectly in the center. We're going to do a text transform and we'll make everything uppercase like we did before. And then we're going to also come in here and we're going to do, we're going to do a background and it's going to be our second color. And we want our button to have a border radius. Oops. Of just like five pixels, nice round corners with a width of let's say 200 pixels, make it a little long and a height of 50 pixels. Font size, we'll do like 1.2 rem and the color for the text should be our third color. And we'll save that and we bring it back and now we're looking great. So now we need to create an effect for the button when it's on hover. And the effect I want is for the background to turn into our main color. And I want the border to turn black. All right, and I want to border around the button. So we'll do border, bottom, color. And I want it to be black. So that way it is known that it's being used. And when you highlight it, it is black. So it looks good. And I want to give a little bit of feedback. So when the button is pressed, we'll do a button active. I just want the position to be relative. And I just want it to move up just ever so slightly, we'll move it top one pixel. So once it's pressed, it's a, like a little bit of feedback. So we'll press it and you can see the button goes up and down now. So now the only thing I wanna do is really just increase the padding on these buttons. Let's come over here and to put it all together, we'll do a bill amount. Is that what I put it says? Bill amount. And we can add a padding of 10 pixels. And when we come back here, that is a nice size little entry area for, and it'll be good for a user to use. And so we can go ahead and do the same thing. Uh, oh, and now that we have the padding, I wanna add the same thing with the focus. So when it's in focus, that means the user is using it. I wanna do a border, three pixels, solid, and we can do it as our second color and when we we'll save that come back and when the user is using it now we have that color there looks good so we want to go ahead and do an outline none so that way like the highlighted color will be disappear and it'll only show the color that we want to do and so i want to do the same thing now and we're going to focus this time on service selector so we'll do that is it Class or ID? Name service selector, ID service selector. So this is going to be an ID of service selector. And the padding is going to be 10 pixels. And that gave us that bump. And so we'll go ahead and do the same thing. Service selector focus. And we'll do the exact same thing again. Save it. We'll come back. And when the customer has it, the box is rounded and we can go select there. And so we only have one more left. And that is going to be our people amount. So we can go here, people amount. Was it amounts, proper spelling or AMT, AMT. And we'll do people amount. Padding, 10 pixels. And then we'll do people amount, focus. 
and we'll add the same thing again, save it. And we are now done with the styling. Thing looks good, so let's focus on our JavaScript. So go ahead, Control or Command N, and save it as app.js, and come under the body tag and go ahead and enter a script source of app.js, so that way they're both communicating back and forth. Thing that we wanna do, all right, we're gonna be using functions here. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create an event so when the button is clicked, it calls a function. So how can we do that? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do document dot get element by ID, and we're gonna go for calculate, which is the ID of the button, and we're gonna go ahead and add an event listener. And that event listener is gonna be on a click, and it's going to call a function, an anonymous function. And when that function is called, it's going to call this function that we're gonna make right now call calculate tip. And the reason why we're doing that is if we don't set this, like all these instructions that we're gonna make inside of a function, it means as soon as the page loads, it's going to start listing out all these values. It's, start, it's gonna start pulling these values even though we haven't entered anything in there yet. So by adding this event listener to the button, this event will trigger when the button is actually clicked. So it gives the user time to enter all the values in the fields that we need them to enter them in. Go ahead and create our function called calculate tip. And it doesn't need any parameters. And basically what we're saying is we wanna do all these sets of instructions once this button is pressed and calculate tip is called here. Because to call any function, you need to call it, and the, the way you call a function is by writing the function name and the parentheses out here. So we're gonna call this, and the first thing that we're doing is we're, we're gonna load our value, so we're using let bill amount, and that is gonna equal document dot query selector and bill amount is bill AMT. So we'll do bill amount. And we want the value of that. So we want the actual numeric value. We're gonna do the same thing for service. We're gonna do document dot query selector. It's gonna be the same thing, dot service. Well, is it? It's gonna be service selector. Yeah, it's gonna be service selector. And it's gonna be dot value. And we're gonna do this one last time with document. Uh, we're gonna do number of people. And it's gonna be document dot query selector. And number of people here is going to be people amount. Dot value. Make sure that numbers are entered. So we can go ahead and do a little validation here. And we'll do if, an if statement, bill amount is equal to nothing, no string, or we use pipes for or, service is equal to zero. So we're gonna enter an alert, which means a pop-up box that comes from the top, a pop-up that sh tells the user something's going on, and we're enter, please enter some values. So we're just doing a simple if statement. If this is empty, prompt them to enter something, and then return nothing. So that's our validation there. And so here we'll go with another if statement. So we're gonna say if num of people is equal to nothing, or num of people is less than or equal to one, meaning one person, num of people will equal one, document, dot get element by ID, and we're gonna do each, oops, it's not a capital, it's lowercase, so we're gonna get each, and we're gonna style display equals none, meaning we don't want this visible. And we will say else, so if it's greater than one, we can do document, 
dot get element by id and we'll do each again and this time we're going to do style dot display equals block i'm going to create a new value called total so let total go ahead and remove that return so i guess that was throwing something off there without me realizing so we're just going to go ahead and do now let total equal bill amount times our service divide that by the number of people so bill amount or the total of the bill times that by the service the percentage and divide that by the number of people that will be the value of total so now we're going to do total equals math.round and that obviously rounds it and we're going to do total multiply that value by 100 and then divide by 100 and it may seem like it's doing the same thing but actually what it's doing here is if we have more decimal points than uh or the value for example let's say you have five people or six people dining that decimal point may exceed two so this is helping us round that down and so we're going to do total equals total dot two fixed two which means we want our decimal places to be fixed at two spots so what we're going to do now is we're going to do document dot get element by id and we're going to get our total tip and we're going to do style dot display we're going to do block oops block and then to change the value we want to go ahead and do document dot get element by id tip and we're going to do here we're going to do enter not html and we're going to equal that to total now all that's done and so we're going to come out here outside of the function and before this function and we're going to come here and do document dot get element by id and we're going to do the same thing we're going to get total tip and we're going to do style dot display and we're going to set that to none because on the page load we don't want that visible to anybody we don't want anyone to see that. And I missed a colon up here. All right. And so we're going to do the same thing with document dot get element by ID. And this time we're going to do for each. And we're going to do style dot display. Oops. And that's going to be none as well. And so I think this should, in theory, be working. Let's restart this page, and it's not. Left hand side assignment. If bill amount. Oh, 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 oh. We have an error here. That's why it's not working. And it needs to be a double equal sign on service. And so now, when I come back to our page, it is working. So let's go ahead and try this out. Let's go ahead and enter a bill amount of $100. Let's go ahead and select 15% as the tip. And let's select two people. We calculate and we have an error. So what's that error? Can I read value of none at calculate tip on line number three? Hmm. So let's see, number of people dot people amount. The input class is people amount. That's correct. And we have service selector. That's service equals service selector. Name is service selector. Oh, this is an ID. That's an ID. So we need to come over here and change this dot to a hash symbol. And now let's come back over here and we're going to try the same thing. We have two. And it works. We did it. Three projects under an hour. They all work and we increased the difficulty as we went. You finish it all. You are so incredible. I can't believe you did this. I hope this worked out exactly the way you wanted. This is a good progression and hopefully you're feeling so much stronger already with your JavaScript skills. Now, I could do this all day long, but I want you to check out my other videos. So make sure you drop a like on this. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't ever miss another live stream or another video. And I will see you on the next one.